On the point where the contract was awarded, did you know at that time that CMAL had concerns about the awarding of the contract to, and were you, were you aware of how much concern they had? Well, the submission to me on the 8th of uh, October, I think quite comprehensively outlines their concerns, and that was a decision, that was a submission to me to consider the information that had been uh, presented. But crucially in that, to give authorisation to proceed. So that submission outlined their concerns, and they did have concerns primarily, well, in fact, really only around the builder's refund guarantee, and I'm happily uh, I'll talk through the rationale of how I believe that those risks were mitigated, but the submission to me outlined that uh, the, the request from me as Minister was to proceed, so it wasn't to, to revisit, to reject, or go through an options appraisal, or to restart the process. It was a recommendation to proceed, to give CMAL the necessary uh, authorisation to proceed, and then it outlined, having raised all the concerns from CMAL about the lack of a full builder's refund guarantee, the, the ways in which those fears could be allayed. The report talks about the best deal in the circumstances, how we could uh, best uh, address the concerns of CMAL. Um, uh, government uh, lawyers had been advised and, and content, SG finance, uh, procurement, uh, it fairly assessed the, the risk here. It spoke of uh, similar problems can arise even where a full builder's refund guarantee is in place and ultimately asked me if I was content to proceed and I was considering, as you've heard from David Middleton and indeed his uh, successor Roy Brannan, Chief Executive of Transport Scotland, that the information submitted showed that there had been progress from the worst point, I think, of negotiations between uh, CMAL and FMEL to a far more satisfactory position, so much so CMAL, we've heard, subsequently co-produced the note that came to me. They co-produced the, the risk assessment that came to me, but as a submission for me to uh, give authorisation to proceed with the process. And I'm happy to go into more detail as to what was in that submission. Right, so you weren't concerned then at this point that you didn't have the full builder's refund guarantee? Well, of course I was concerned because the papers give reason to be concerned, but also gives the mitigations to be taken into account to make a balanced decision. That's exactly what I did. So the paper was asking for my recommendation in the affirmative and the positive. Do we have permission to uh, proceed? You know, and now, the interpretation that I got from this is that the matters under negotiation had been resolved uh, at the point I was presented with the submission because of the, the, the narration of the issues and the, the reassurances uh, within it. And, you know, I've seen elsewhere in the uh, CMAL evidence that they claim not to have put in a recommendation, positive or negative. But then, of course, in evidence, they've said subsequently that they didn't really want to award the contract. But the paper that I was considering was asking exactly for that, for authorisation uh, to proceed, notwithstanding the concerns that they had raised, I felt there was the the necessary mitigations to, uh, to address that. And I'm also aware that a full BRG builder's refund guarantee is not the panacea. It doesn't ensure that there will be no issues in uh, both uh, procurement or indeed the build out. And it is really curious when you, when you look at the note that the note didn't suggest that Ferguson's was incapable of building these vessels or even that there was a high risk that they were going to be late or that the contractor wouldn't perform. The risk was around the, the, the financing, the, the builder's refund guarantee, because FML was a relatively new financial entity, but the shipyard was already well established and had been producing vessels for the CalMac fleet. So I was looking at the assessment, the history, the confidence in the yard, the fact that the evaluation exercise showed that FML came out on top as overall you know, better. So there was a lot of reasons to have reassurance and confidence in the submission that had been put to me. Of course, CMAL were concerned. They were right to be concerned in that they felt they would be carrying a lot of risk as a, their own corporate organisation. And that's fair, and that's therefore why Transport Scotland, uh, with, a, a, with the support of ministers, then offered that letter of comfort, which, as you've heard in evidence, was co-produced. So it was co-produced to the point that Transport Scotland thought they were rec recommending to me that uh, they were seeking approval 
to proceed. You've now got two former Chief Executives of Transport Scotland confirming that, and for completeness, the Director General and equivalent of economy at the time. That was the understanding of the submission put to me. Yep, there still seems to be a lot of concerns from CMAL who felt as if they were maybe forced into it. So with